Good morning. Yeah, I'm barely up too. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm really excited. I am too. I'm also Shamika. My name is Elena. Yeah, she's telling the truth. And you're watching Monday Morning Monk Meditations. Or the stuff. I like to call it the stuff. I like the stuff. That's much better. We're going to be the stuff. the stuff. Welcome. All right. Have a seat. The stuff. The stuff. The stuff. The stuff. The star, 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 the the star, 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 the you know, <laughs> and like, what? Well, because I would say yes. Well, yes. Like, oh, you know, wow. somebody, somebody, somebody is gonna be mm-hmm. like, you don't need to make beats. No, no. See, <laughs> this, this, this is why being able to articulate through the language of this space, which is academic, mm-hmm. which is theological, um, so within that framework, you could approach someone with um, your. Not Christology, because that's Jesus. Your theodicy is the evil in the world and why it happens. Um, there's one specifically about God, like that's how you understand God, right? And so your understanding of God is that God exists everywhere and in all things, and the way that you connect to the divine is through music, right? Okay. And so um, the notion of the sacred and the profane, you can talk to them about the original Greek. That's always fun. Um, but then also this notion <laughs> that the sacred is, is initially, quote-unquote, thought of as set apart um, from the profane, quote-unquote. Um, but if the, what is the function of the sacred? Right. Why do we set it apart? Who is it for? And what about the profane? Because they get left out. Okay, two things. Yeah. One thing, uh, my immediate thought actually was, was not even like a theological I was thinking like, yo, science, binaural beats, we know that these vibrations create these sounds, these emotions, these feelings, and very specific things mm-hmm. in physics, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. real. Yes. Uh, and therefore, because of that, we can argue that this type of sound is in fact necessary. Maybe you don't know that you need it. Like, you have this idea of what is sacred for you, and therefore you close yourself off to certain types of sound, mm-hmm. and maybe there's a certain part of your own personal vibration. Yeah, yeah. Or mm-hmm. maybe we're just all uh, in our different alignment of different practices or different things that are more predominant. Mm-hmm. So, let's see, I, I don't know. Let's see, like, I'm not okay with mm-hmm. saying that because I think that's problematic. Because I have to, like, go through that really quick skip to be like, oh, well, that's why certain people like country music. And uh, like, that could be really. Well, bad. That is that is an easy way for people to just disclose themselves from right. entire genres. But also the first thing that you started with is one of the most problematic tropes in religion and theology, which is, what is the science say? Because right. there's this sort of manufactured uh, beef right. between science and religion. Right. And I feel like it would make sense in any other context to start with the science and use that as the proof and the understanding moving forward and look at all of the research. But in spaces like this where people are afraid of science, where people see it as this thing that they don't understand, but they understand their faith and they read the book, the word, and so that's where they hold their, but you know, and so that creates this false dichotomy that people cannot both believe in God and believe in science not as bad as it used to be, but most people who have misunderstandings of Christianity, aka they're not Christians or they're no longer Christian, they make this assumption that to be Christian you are not educated or you're not well traveled or cosmopolitan. So you can challenge that entire understanding of, of what does it mean to function as a Christian or what does it mean to do Christian work by a lot of things, one of which being starting from this position of what we know from science and bringing it into a religious or theological space and then also introducing this music that isn't often or isn't always understood as Christian. With like hip hop, I took a class 
as an undergrad about hip hop um, from a professor, Harry Aleem, um, and we talked about Christian hip hop like one of the weeks, and it was kind of sad. <laughs> it was really kind of sad because Christian hip hop is sort of um, like a watered down, not cool, you're not really hip hop, but okay kind of right. thing yeah. because you're using some of the the you're using some of the beats you're using some of the same sounds but your your lyrics aren't on like you're 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 spinning your rhymes are not dope right and it's hard to get people who do that well right i know i know of one or two you know flame i'll have to play them for you that is one of the few people who i've seen who has good beats he has good rhymes but after that point, then you have to look at the theology. Now, I'm not right. saying that you're... Sorry. No, my brain is like... Yeah, go, there, go, there, go. There, there. So, yeah. okay. So then I think you have to talk about, yeah, like, if you have, quote, unquote, Christian hip-hop, A, what does that mean? B, then you have to talk about the Christian marketing complex and, like, the Christian bookstore mm. and what it takes to get sold in the Christian bookstore mm. and how we make it difference or we try and draw a line mm -hmm. um so i would argue that like most stuff is like spiritual hip-hop right um because of a topic choice because of a vibrational choice um and there's this whole you know, debate like hip-hop was conscious and now rap is not and i don't want to buy into that because i mm. think that is also really really problematic mm -hmm. but we can't avoid the fact that hip-hop did in fact have like really conscious topics that it sought to address in terms of revolution right. musically mm -hmm. and lyrically right mm -hmm. and so when you when you go back to like the christian christian hip-hop mm -hmm. moment um mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say that that's like um an oxymoron to me but then part of me is like right. it kind of is because if you have to label it in such a way so that you can sell it in a Christian bookstore, which means that you've limited your language because mm -hmm. you don't want to upset anybody, mm -hmm. you don't want to shake the status quo, right. then you're either not hip-hop or you're not Christian or you're maybe not either. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of, I was pushing it, but like, so as a kid, I was only allowed to buy things from a Christian bookstore, um, um, except for jazz. Bless your heart. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and so I did not buy. I think in high school, I was allowed to get stuff like the limos and like the stooges because I had this really interest in like the very punk and like hip hop. Um, but I, you know, I said earlier, really, I don't think there were a lot of things that I bought at the Christian bookstore that ever shaped my theology <laughs> or that like, supported me in hard times or right, like, carried right. me through anything. Like. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like Jesus, and then you know, like we're yeah. gonna switch up the style, and we got metal Jesus, right? So, you know, like, <laughs> yes, or soft rock Jesus. Right. Um, yeah. But it was never like, and, and I grew up in a household where I heard a lot of gospel, a lot of blues, and bluegrass, and stuff like that. And those things were like real for me, and I guess like I could have bought those, but I mean, my parents already owned them, so right. I would have bought them. All right, um, all right, save your money. And so those things were real for me, but those things were also not always, like, those are in the Christian bookstore, right? Right. But I think the blues have taught me more about God, and the hip-hop has taught me more about God by virtue of questioning. Yes. And by virtue of, of refusing to, to limit language or energy or style or imagery in order to fit into a particular space. Mm. Um, and this is something that, okay, we're going to segue over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we'll come right. back. All right. Okay. Let's try. Um, Let's take a field trip. All right. So, yesterday, I got to go to church. Mm -hmm. I was going to go to St. Philip's. I was kind of running late. It was like 11.09. We started at 11.15. <laughs> the sidewalk was icy. <laughs> <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was like, oh. You know, I was having this moment where, like, I had, like, like that's where I want to go, right? Mm -hmm. And then I felt, you know, like, Grace, hey, Elena, what's up? We should get a little here. Mm -hmm. Like, all mm -hmm. right, all right, we'll do that. I'm walking along, listening mm -hmm. to Coltrane. I'm always preaching about how Coltrane is, like, 
access the divine, mm. and being a symbol of how music can be spiritual without being. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, right. But but so I'm walking down the street and it's icy and I stop at this place on uh, Amsterdam and I get some tea, I smoke my cigarette, and I'm like being all of me, right? But I'm on my way to church <laughs> and I'm like, well, this is a, you know, like, I'm smoking a cigarette, drinking some tea, so I'm smoking a all my way to church. And what do I do with that? Mm. Because I was kind of like really happy, actually, you know, I was like, yeah. yeah Ice in the ground, it's pouring rain. True. So it was great. Yeah. And to me, like, that was being real with who I am at this point in time was a real spiritual act. Mm -hmm. And to stop trying to make that break, you know, like, oh, it's Sunday, mm -hmm. so I need to put on the gospel and get ready for church. Right. Because you've been listening to the gospel all week. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, I'm walking, it's like, I come around, I go around Central Park and go up to St. Edward and the Martyrs, shout out to them. They were really nice. Um, it was one of those things where, like, you know, I'm just like, all right, God, this is how I feel, like, what I'm hearing you say I should be doing at this moment, so we're just going to go over here mm -hmm. and hang out in the church that I've never been to. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. Right? And then, so, after mass, I leave, walk back the other way, you know, and again, it's like the cool train and whatever, and, mm -hmm. and it was really nice, because I didn't, because I caught myself being like, you just came from church, you should be reflecting on the, uh. on the mass, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like, but you know, like, and, and, and um, in the, in the spirit of the mass itself, after the homily, being kind of like, all right, I'm done. And I almost left because I was just kind of like, all right, I'm good. Right, right, but you know, like, you're not supposed to do that. Right, right. Hmm. Um, hmm. And this idea of like, what is Christian mm -hmm. often being, you know, really a paradigm that most of us can't live in. And I, I know that's not like new, mm -hmm. but. I think we have to say it over and over and over and over again, because the thing that scares me about having this sacred music conversation here at Union uh -huh. is that I think I could use the science, and I think I could use my view of God, God is in everything, blah, 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 but if I make some really serious music that employs language that isn't what people expect to come out, mm -hmm. is that still sacred? And I think as we're having these conversations right now about um, like, like language use and protest, right? right? Oh, and yeah. people are like, you can't say fuck the police because that's not conscious, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you not know NWA? Were you not there? When were you yeah. born? <laughs> Sit down. But, wow. But, but there's still there's still that energy, right? Mm -hmm. There's still that fear mm -hmm. of language, and there's still. Of policing, right? You know, or you can't walk down the street a certain type of way because your ass twitches too much, and that means that you're, you know, mm -hmm. and there's this, this fear, right? Of like, mm -hmm. your whole self can't fit into God somehow. Mm. Like, you gotta, and I'm not talking about like dangerous habits or like changing and growth and stuff like that. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you as a natural person and your natural personality and your natural love of life, and saying that certain parts of your love. Mm -hmm. um, and so thinking about sacred music the fact that we have to call it sacred music I guess is the thing that trips me out because I would just say that music is sacred anyway right yes. um, that's an amen from the street I hear you New York <laughs> <laughs> well you talked about um this defining of music as sacred, my question is who gets to make that definition? Right. Right, because there's this notion of gatekeepers who get to say what is and isn't sacred, who can and cannot preach, um, you know, what does it mean to really be baptized? So, like, if you go across the board in some of these denominations, right. people are arguing over how many angels can dance on the head of a pin where people are dying out in the streets, right? So like, what are the what are the conversations people having and why? What is the value of it? And when the church, before Martin Luther nailed that thing on the door, um, 
It wasn't Martin Luther. It wasn't Martin Luther? Yeah, he had a list of 90 demands to a party like in the middle yep. of the night. And so the morning, right. uh, the <laughs> next morning, everybody was walking out the church, right? And so that during that time, the church was it. Like, there was no conversation. Right. They were the ones who knew how to read the book because they, what, controlled the language. So people right. didn't speak Latin. Only the people that were preaching it could read and write it and whatever not. So as soon as Martin Luther translated the Bible into German and they got translated into other languages, the Bible is now the most translated book ever. Also the most sold book ever. But this notion of, of the people didn't have control over the language and what happened when people were like, wait, what? The book says what? And so, Sorry. Sorry. whoa, no, yeah, no, they're going to apologize for awesomeness. It's true. Because once the language was unlocked and the people had access to it, there was this blossoming of innovation, if you will, to the church. We would call it the Reformation, but I'm now going to call it an innovation because that was an opportunity for people to then say, wait, what does it mean to me? And how do I want to look at it? Because right. this, doesn't, this doesn't resonate with me and how I connect with the divine. And so right. now you have another generation of people who are like, mm, right, looking at the church saying, this is not how I understand it, or, or there's there's something missing here for me. I don't see myself reflected here. I don't see any aspects of my life reflected here. Like you said, sometimes right. you got to check part of yourself at the door when you go into church, or, or there's these expectations of you. And when you trace those expectations back um, to find out who designed them or who designated them as the right way to do something, it was probably some old white dude, right? Or, or whatever, it was some institution. Right who no longer reflect the way things are today. And it, it reminds me of a, a story of a woman who just get, just got married, newlywed, cooking her first roast for her husband, and her mother gave her uh, this pot that's been passed down to the family. So she cooks the roast, and she cuts the corners off, and she puts it, and she's cooking. And her husband's like, why Why do you cut the corners off? Oh, so, you know, that's what we do in our family. You know, so the husband's like, no, that's kind of weird. I like, I like the edges. Why would you? And so, the, like, no, I really want to know. Call mom. Mom. How you doing? Nice to, nice to hear from you. How are the kids? Listen, how, why do you cut the edges off the roast? Oh, you know, well, yeah, it's a really good uh, recipe I got from my mother. You know, you know, it's just it's just the way that we did that. So then you call grandma. How are you doing? How's the nursing home treating you? Listen, why did you cut the corners off the roast? Well, child, that's the only way it would fit in the pot. So three generations of women but only the first one knew, right, like what the right. thinking behind that was. And so if you translate that into the way that people are manifesting church and worship and all of these traditions, right. you could trace some of them back and it could be as simple as something like that. But now we're holding it as steadfast, no way, up, no other way, right. whatnot. Right. Mm. Uh, uh, for those watching at home and keeping score, this morning's tea was jasmine tea. Tell us about jasmine tea. Jasmine tea is named after Jasmine, my little sister. It started off as this little thing, and then you put it in there and add hot water, and it blossoms. Yeah, that's why I used it. The tea is in the process of becoming mm. just like you. Mm. And me. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Join us next time and bring your own tea. It's only have enough for us. And salad. Oh, yeah. And the salad today, which is now gone and totally delicious, was made by Elena and had... Today's salad was arugula, avocado, fresh apricot, mm -hmm. bing cherry, sunflower seeds, and toasted pumpkin seeds. That's right. Mm. Get those veggies in. Yeah, get those veggies in early and often. That's what I say. Because I'm not trying to get scurvy. It is if you're a pirate or a college student, apparently. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, it's still going. All right. Okay. The screen just went off. That was spooky. That was kind of, yeah, I was sign-eyeing it. Mm-hmm. The Holy Ghost in the Machine.